And of course it's no good. Good morning, you're first. And why are you up at three o'clock? one man band I'm central time. It's uh, 3.30 here. Hmm. Good time to start a Saturday work day. things I wanted to do today. Oops, that's the wrong place to do it. May take me a few minutes here to get things set up, but I was going to work on hooking up that... Oh, I think I'm echoing back to myself. Hold on. I apparently have a Twitch window open somewhere. on the front page of the website. Oh yeah, let's see how they did last night without me. Well, we got a decent number of viewers. They got zero followers. What? How do you get zero followers? The Solania Catacombs Encounter is not responding. I'm trying to remember what changes were made that might have been, that could have caused that. Why 3.30? Because that's when I woke up. Oh, I still hear myself. Do. 
You do do do. You do do do. You do 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 do. Do, do. All right, you'll have to hold on a second here while I get some things set up. Oop, let me submit those aggro changes. Graduation was fabulous. Uh, Maxine graduated pre-K. Not even kindergarten, just pre-kindergarten. And apparently they do graduations for that now. Uh, but I got to do the... Without knowing, I showed up and they didn't have anyone to do photos. And I had uh, my camera that I have a decent camera. It's six years old or something now, but uh, I have a good lens on it, and it's a good you know, 24 megapixel uh, digital SLR, and so they had me do the uh, photography for the, for the entire thing, so I took 1,200 photos and shared them last night. Maxine won the Salt of the Earth Award, or award for being uh, the kindest, uh, I'm trying to remember what else, kindest, most kind and honest child. She should have won them all, but they only gave one kid one award. Everybody wins in the modern days. No kid's a loser. <laughs> let's see okay it looks like this finished up so now I can get unity importing and so the two things I was going to try to do this morning is I'd added those taming skills in a brief test showed that they weren't working uh, even though I believed everything was hooked up so I was going to go through and debug what was going on with that and then I was going to work on hooking up that giant, that gin ginormous ship as a uh, a decoable player house. will involve a bunch of stuff I haven't done in a while. 
like setting up doors so that the doors open and close and teleporters and stuff like that. First things first, time to do some taming. Let's see. <laughs> it's just going to be me doing some debugging on taming. Again, this release is when I hope to have taming to a better state for players. Uh, so they can actually be, if they want to, they can rely completely on their tame pet to be somewhat effective. I'm not, I'm not saying they're going to be as effective as like a top, you know, top player with an optimized build, but they should be better. And there is a raffle going, in case anybody's not in it already. It is a raffle for the five-piece band. Band? One man, five-piece band. No, don't get him out of bed. <laughs> It'll probably be really boring. It's just going to be me doing some debugging and stopping and starting Unity over and over again. Lancel, who is your husband? Twitch. Or in game. I was afraid it was Snugs or somebody like that. I know the in game name. I don't know the Twitch name. Got the whole family. And again, like I said, it's going to be a little boring here. I'm just waiting on Unity to import right now. But when that is done, I should be able to jump in and do some testing. case people are wondering why I'm streaming at 3.30 on a Saturday, it's because I woke up at 3.30 on a Saturday. Actually, I woke up at 3 on a Saturday and couldn't get back to sleep, so my usual rule is I'll lay in bed an hour and see if I can get back to sleep, and if I can't, I get up. So I laid in bed for half an hour, and it's just like, nope. And then as soon as I start moving around in bed, uh, Mojito thinks it's breakfast time and so then Mojito gets excited and he's like standing up next to me on the bed staring at me rather than sleeping under the covers. <laughs> yeah, Maxine's five. I have not even tried to get her to play yet. Yep. As soon as he thinks it's dinner time, it's over. Waiting for it. Okay, so now I should be able to get to that point. Alright, camera to a decent zoom, so let me see where I'm at. I don't even remember what I 
the last state was on things. I know I tried to test it out on air after I thought I had everything hooked up and it did not work. Do 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 you do 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 Ooh, kind of a creepy feel without much light on me. Maybe I should have a bright window. There we go. Oh yeah, you can see the looks like I'm doing a spotlight on myself. That's actually just me moving a Windows Explorer window around that's white. Uh, I've now hit the play button and I'm just waiting for it to come up and then I can start testing. That reminds me, I need to email Twitch again and see why they've not approved us as a partner. Bastards. Alright, waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it. It's a little odd. I mean, it's in the editor, so it doesn't mean anything, but it seems performance is not as good as it normally is. All right, let me do a quick profiler grab just to make sure there's nothing weird going on. Oh, you know what? I bet I've got, I haven't restarted Unity in a day or two, and somehow it has managed not to crash. Oh yeah. Yeah, Unity's sitting at like 10 gigs of memory. Okay, let me just close Unity and reopen it. That should be at least be pretty quick. Oh, well, it's sped up a little bit now. Maybe it got done thrashing. All right. Do I have a tamed creature right now? Ah, oh, yes, a black wife. Perfect. Let me get my tamed creature out. Okay. Oh, you know what? I think it did work. Crap. Uh, so this may be a quick uh, taming session here. So his strength... It looks like the thing that was messing me up. Uh, so here's what I'm looking at. If you check his strength... His strength is 361. I was just about to point to my screen like an idiot, uh, but it's over kind of on the right side. It's alphabetical. You can see his strength is 361. Now, if I bypass trainers so I can set my stats, and I check him again, hey, okay, guess what? It's 361. But. If I dismiss him and then resummon him, his strength will be significantly lower than 361 is my hope. Aha! 261. Okay, so that so it turns out that stuff is working. <laughs> I'm gonna test the other ones. the other four skills. But yeah, so the thing that was throwing me off last time was the the uh, training is working, but it sets those values at the time of the summon. So I think before when I was trying to test it on air, I summoned it and then raised my skill to see if it went up and uh, it didn't go up because it was set when he was summoned. And I can show you what the 
how this works. In case anybody out there cares about the tech side of things, if you look over here on the right side. Uh, so this is, and actually I'll put it over here on the left side for a minute, so it's not colliding with names. off the screen a little bit that's kind of odd I think that's probably just because of the uh, the non 16 by 9 nature hold on let me do this yeah my monitor is not 16 by 9 my monitor is 16 by 10 a Twitch broadcast at 1080 is 16 by 9. Alright, so if I shrink it down a little bit, you can see it a little better. Alright, uh, so if you look over here on the left side, you can see uh, we have different ways of assigning things to setting up stats on uh, creatures and lots of things. So we have for all the tame creatures, there's a base innate tamed pet. Now these are things that get applied to all pets, all tamed creatures uh, at all times. So let's see, so combat health regen. So this is, it's kind of a weird thing, but it is you set the phase you want it to override if it needs to be at a certain, occur at a certain time within the updates. And that's really so you can have, like, if this stat needs to be applied before that stat, because, you know, like, like strength needs to be applied, and then the health calculation is done. You want to make sure you get those in, in the right order. Uh, so that's just what set it's applied at, what time it's applied at. And then you can set the stat, which there's a lot of stats. Oh, you guys can't see that. Uh, but there's, it pops up a window that shows like 200 stats, which is why there's a uh, a stat search field here because the window for how many stats there were started hanging off the screen. Uh, so we had to like add a search field because it was there too many of them. Uh, resistant isn't used that much. Oh no, I'm not gonna sing in the morning, John Marcus. <laughs> you want me to do the? Uh, I'll do the low and low and quiet one here in a minute. <laughs> Thank you, John Marcus. I know it's not morning where you are. What time is it in over there? What time is it? Oh, it's six o'clock in the evening over there, five forty-eight. <laughs> it is three o'clock, three forty-eight here. little bit different uh, so not exactly the other side of the world <laughs> hey good morning Liz so you can see that each one of these things each one of these innates these are changes to stats that get applied most things in the game are sent through stats uh, one way or another. Sometimes those get used internally, but that's uh, the stat system is something that's updated server side. The server knows what they are, the client knows what they are, and if another player, we mark which stats get sent to other players. Some players are only, or stats are only between you and the server. Uh, some get sent to everybody in the scene. And we've got an efficient system, so it only it, does like delta updates so it only sends stats that have changed uh, and the server can track all that stuff so it doesn't you know it doesn't have to resend even though we've got like a thousand stats per character or something crazy when I do this do that thing that's basically a list of the stats get used for the character No, we don't get up just because I'm streaming. 
yeah, and I just hadn't streamed for a few days and I woke up, so I was like, yeah, I'll get on stream while I do. I've got a few things I can do that might be interesting. Probably not. I have a busy day coming up, so uh, as soon as Maxine gets up, which may not be for another three hours, uh, I'm going to not stream the rest of the day. So this will probably be a low viewer couch stream because all the smart people are asleep. <laughs> well, I guess in uh, in uh, over there, Liz, it's probably like, like uh, 9 or 10 in the morning, so it's not... Not that crazy for you. Oh yeah, your odds are good. Yeah, I'll do. I'm planning on doing my same number of giveaways, same style giveaways this morning. Oh, I see uh, Flindirk entered. Hey, Flindirk. Uh, sounds like they're getting your town set up for you. Very excited to have your town. And maybe once your town gets set up. I will bring you a uh, a welcome gift for your town, uh, like maybe a big statue or something if you want to place it. I know you like to stay quiet, Flinderk. <laughs> Let's see. Uh oh, here's Airborne Singer. Why would you wake him up? <laughs> Saturday you guys are supposed to sleep in uh, but anyway so this is how this stuff gets set and then there's a value when you see a field like this that's a big field where you can type stuff in and it's a value expression field that means the value for it is set from a formula so this can be like could just be a number like one uh, due to some weirdness in how it parses if you do a negative number, you have to do 0 minus 1. So you can see that uh, we actually give them negative combat health regen by default. Uh, and there's negative health regen. And these are, again, I'm looking at the stat uh, that's being modified. <laughs> hey, thank you very much, Flindirk. And good morning. Uh, just out of curiosity, are any of you people silly enough to be Americans and be up at this time? Hopefully you guys are all in Europe or Asia or something. Lancel? <laughs> and you went and woke him up at 3 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Missouri, California? You guys are nuts. Oh, he was just going to bed, I see. Alright, well at least a few of you are in places where it's not 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. or 4 a.m. or whatever. Uh, but anyway, so you can see these are some of the stats that get applied. So this, because this is the innate tamed pet, uh, this, this, is, uh, this gets applied to all tamed pets. So this is how some things get set on. So you can see they have a base damage resistance of uh, 5 plus their adventure level divided by 12. Uh, they have a absorption base value of 45. Hmm, I wonder if that actually should be 7. But anyways, you can see if it's like a hundred level 100 critter, they're going to have a base damage resistance of 13 for a tamed pet. And then they get their health. This is just a bonus gets applied to their health. Uh, so the stuff I've been adding in. So there's two different things because this is a an innate that gets applied to your pet. Uh, the stats, if it uses a stat in there for calculation, it's using its stat. Now you can see down here. Uh, with this magic resistance, it's actually looking at the parent dot whatever, the parent parent dot damage resistance. 
So adventure level on a pet doesn't do much. The only real thing it does is it gets used for some calculations. We kind of use that as the measure for how good you are. And so when we apply, when your taming skills apply bonuses to things, generally they get applied to the adventure level to raise the adventure level. And you can see this guy's adventure level is so this guy has an adventure level of 114 so I've got like hundreds in all my taming skills or something like that yeah 120s in all my taming skill so that raises that base level and then that adventure level gets used for calculations for health and some other stuff on the pets but you can see when it's a parent dot taming that means it looks at the who owns the pet and applies uses the tame uses that value so then the hookup for that is hold on wait for it and again this is uh, stuff that is yeah, I mean it's a, we don't normally show it that much but it's something that players have multiple players have gone in figured out where it lives in the data and kind of pulled it so it's not anything super secret uh, let's see Whoop. oh that's not what I want where's my window capture wait there's a way to just maximize it right Stretch to screen. There we go. That's what I want. All right. Let's scale that up a little bit. So this is a file you guys don't get to see much. This is not really code. This is just a uh, tab separated file uh, that gets used to pull. This is used for defining skills. Now, a lot of stuff gets defined as skills. These are anything that, like even like potions and stuff show up in here uh, as skills because potion is basically in food and other things. You can see there's like 1,100 skills. But this is how we define a number of things. For, it determines how we define uh, both the name, hooking them up, what school they're in, what things it needs to advance, the cost to advance those things, which I do need to change here in a minute. Uh, actually, it looks like they're set to 400, so that's probably fine. But you can see on some of these, like the strength training, you can see the strength training here. So the thing that's also defines is what stat, if a stat is just a passive, uh, all it does is add stats. It doesn't have an actual active component to it. Uh, if it does have an active component, that gets tied up somewhere else. But for this, you can see for tame strength training, it adds the stat of taming strength. So if I mouse over myself, I should see that right now I have a 21. Oops. I get back up at that window. But you can see Tame and Strength is constant 1-1 one, one, uh, linear, so it's basically the same for every point of this skill. I get one point of this stat. And get back over to Unity. So you can see I have this pet tam or strength taming. Uh, and it is plus 21 tame creature strength, is just what the skill or the stat is called. And that's really what these usually show when you mouse over them, is it's just showing you a stat. Uh, so, plus 21, because as you saw, I have a 21, and it was a 1 to 1. Uh, but if I mouse over my character here, I should also see I have a tame strength. Oh, I'm not going to be able to see it unless I put this window back. If I mouse over myself. There we go. Tame strength. So you can see in the upper right hand corner, 
taming strength is 21 because I have a 21 in that stat so that's applying that so when this guy does his innates when he looks at applying his innates uh, it will be you know it's showing the parent dot taming strength is what gets added to his strength yeah right down here So anyways, that's how the skill hookup works. There's about 20 other steps that I left out there, but that kind of gives you the rough idea of how we can control things and how things are set up so we can pretty easily add new skills. Uh, there's a little bit of coding that has to be done per skill that gets added, but it's not horrible. It's, you know, it's like five or six places so we can define like what school it is and what category it is and uh, is a positive number good or is a po positive number bad? because you know, there's some things where a positive number is bad and we want to make sure that we can when you mouse over it uh, it's showing green is good and red is bad and uh, you've also got to find as to whether or not it's you know zero to one based or to zero, one to, or zero to a hundred or is it just a floating point or is it an integer or whatever it is so you've got to define all that stuff too uh, it's yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of moving parts so it's one of those things I always look to simplify things wherever I can uh, and this is as simple as it gets it used to be way way more complicated uh, but now that we actually have it thanks to a text file and it's all definable uh, you can actually open this that's that skill file I was showing you can actually show open that in a uh, in Excel or something and edit it in that so what that means uh, is this pet. So it's again, as I showed you, yeah. So this guy now has a strength. All right, I think we're done with that window. Let me put that guy back. This guy has a strength of 261 right now, uh, but. be just that easy for you guys to level yours as well just click a few times and you're up to 120 right all right that's how it works uh, but again if I look at him now he's going to be still at strength 261 kind of hard to see there but that's again as I mentioned that's because I was silly and those values get applied at uh, summon time so anyways, let's see how much this uh, pet damage stuff helps. Kill pet. Oh yeah, that's the other one I need to go test is the move speed. <laughs> let's see, how much are you hitting for a little tamed pet? Yeah, so he's hitting for... 80, 71, 93, these are all non-crit hits from him. Seventy-eight, sixty-five. Of course there's little numbers flowing by or flying by in there, but those are all from poison damage. Oh, I think I had that turned off on here. I was doing some performance testing and I like to test with numbers on and off because I'm, I'm trying to identify stuff. Uh, let me turn on my floaties. I think that's what it was. Isn't there something? I do want that. Hmm. Where does that live? Yeah, I just have those things turned off. That's where you're not seeing them. So at the top, auto hide, show, 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 show name plates, show player name plates, play, show player health bar. I don't want that. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, in for names, I was trying to get the damage floaties to show up. Oh, and that's my keys have been re are set to something else anyways.
Yeah, I was trying to get the damage floaties to show. Uh, but anyways, you can see there's like a hit for 117. Ooh, a 173. Okay, so that's already, he's already getting meaner just from that one thing. So we'll do a quick test here. I'm going to do a time scale so you guys can see more numbers fly by. Get an idea. So his max hits look like they're, you know, 173 crits. 80s and no 90s. 93 crits and 91, so 91 to 93, so 90, around 91 is probably his max. 92, 93 maybe his max. Hope you already killed him. That's alright, I've got plenty more of those. So now let me dismiss this guy. Lower this skill. So this is... I just took a hundred points off so you can kind of see what the difference between uh, yeah you know you're next dude Oops. so you can kind of see the difference between before and after with whoops so remember the last one the max hits were in the 90s range yeah so this guy's not even you know his crits are in the 80s range 74. So you can see just with that one skill, it's already increased his DPS a little bit. Yeah, 137. That may be getting close to his max critical. You yeah, haven't seen a single hit in the 80s yet. Versus the other one was hitting for 90s. Uh, Non-critical. So anyways, you get an idea of what strength does, and as I showed, uh, like for this particular pet, the strength goes from like 240s to two to 340s, so that's a pretty, pretty good chunk of uh, difference there. So that's one of the stats. Now I think the other thing I was going to test is make sure, see if this was impacting his health at all. So was it 1400 or something like that? Let's see. So that is not changing his health. That does not surprise me at all. Again, that all depends on the order at which it gets applied. Do 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 do. Okay, so I think the next one we'll test is. Uh, so that one is working. In case you're wondering why I'm testing from like 21 to 121 to see what the skill difference is, I'm really just looking for the difference of 100 to see how that affects things. Uh, since these add linear values to stats, uh, since they get linear, these apply linear values to stats, uh, it's really, again, it doesn't matter if I'm going from 1 to 101 or 100 to 200, it's the same thing. And since it's uh, a pain to unlearn a skill below 20, uh, just leave it there. But anyways, we will set that. So they don't get a bonus the longer they go without a death. That would be a cool feature, though. Hmm, I'm trying to think if there's something I could do for that. Like maybe make it so they get a little buff applied every time they get a, a kill. So you can power up your, your pet. Ooh, I like that. That may be something that I do for... Maybe that's what I can give to the uh, the undead. As if they get a kill, but then the undead, they automatically die on their own. Again, I'm looking at both taming and summon stuff. I'm trying to see, and there's some overlap between them. Alright, let's see. We will do... We will test Pet Hide Toughness Training. So this is supposed to raise his damage resistance and his match, uh, max health. So 
So its damage resistance is currently 14.5 and his magic resistance is zero. Or is it one? Magic resistance zero. So what I would expect to see from this is once I hide train that is so it's a this one is a 0.25 modifier which means if I get a hundred points a hundred times 0.25 is it should give him 25 points of damage resistance oh wait I'm not ignoring you I'm just not always looking over here man does the passive skills containment affect the elemental summons damage as well no these only affect taming now, what I will be doing, possibly not for this release, but uh, for a future, like maybe next release, is adding at least one additional skill per tree that has a pet in it. It'll be more for increasing the power of that pet in that tree in some way. But I'm trying not to rush that, because again, once I give you guys a skill, I can't really take it away without massive carnage. So I'm trying to make sure that those skills are actually meaningful to that pet and useful to that pet and themed for that pet. I'm trying not to just add go to every summon tree and say, hey, here's one that if you give it to him, it gives him plus strength. I'm trying to make it actually meaningful, like something like what we were just talking about, like you get a buff every time it gets a kill. Or it gets a buff every time you get a kill. But yeah, this release is uh, Taming and Warding are the new of new cool kids on the street. And again, warding may be just because there's only a modest number of things, creatures that use magic, warding may be more of a PvP tuner type thing. Yeah, Chef 311, I'm continuing to try the stuff I'm adding. Again, I'm trying to make sure that when I update pets that, again, I mean, I say it about every every other day I'm on here stream is I'm trying to make sure they're apples to oranges. So it's not just, you know, all you go and look at is like the Obsidian Bear Destroyer has, you know, 2,200 hit points. The Wyvern has 1,400 hit points, therefore the bear is better. I'm, I'm trying to make it so it's not that type of comparison and things actually have a purpose and like they have something that they're better at. Like again, the Wyvern has already been set up to be a, a good PvP pet for those who want to PvP. Uh, the reason why is his... He has some debuffs. He has a debuff that he'll apply to his target poison that he hits with and then the poison also uh, drains focus which is kind of important for PvP. Now pets in PvP, uh, tamed pets in PvP currently are freaking useless. You guys probably all know this, I don't have to tell you that if you've tried it, uh, but that's because they move stupid slow. They move a little slower, I'm not sure why they were all set this way, but they were all set up so they move a little slower than the player does with base movement. If you have ever seen someone move with a base move speed in PvP, they are going to die. <laughs> PvPers rely a lot on speed, whether you're a caster running or range trying to keep distance, or a melee, it doesn't matter because you're all trying to catch each other, trying to get on each other or get away from each other, one or the other. So speed is very important. So having a tamed pet that's not fast is uh, very embarrassing. Okay, so let me do this one. And as we just saw, his magic resistance was zero. His damage resistance was, uh, what, like 14? 14.5. Okay, so now we can go get 100 points of it. So he should be up to uh, 39 and 25. Let's see. Oh, and I did the stupid thing again. I gotta dismiss him and resummon him. And his damage resistance is not up, and his magic resistance is not up. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. 
Uh, actually, it shows it's not giving any stats. That probably means that there's an error over here in my other, in my, in this thing. Let me check. see what it is. Okay, well, hold on one second. Again, sometimes I'm silly and I'll edit this uh, giant spreadsheet without using a spreadsheet, without using like Excel or something. Do, 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 one second. I gotta stop and restart do a force refresh. Oh, and this is probably also a good opportunity to go and reconnect my version control. That was a dialogue you couldn't see, but uh, our uh, Perforce, our revision control software we use which is what tracks like change histories for files and who changed what and allows us to do branching so we can move stuff from a trunk version of the game to the QA version of the game to the live version of the game. Uh, that does a nightly maintenance at 4 a.m. every night. I keep meaning to go and change it, but I haven't got around to it yet. Uh, but now it's back on so I can do stuff. Let me, I've got a refresh. Stats. And we have some things that you can update without restarting the editor. The uh, skill tree thing is not one of them, unfortunately. I'll try to do a giveaway here in about another 10 minutes. Do a raffle. And for those who watched the stream last night, I was uh, not on the stream. Probably second time in the last year I wasn't on it. Sounds like they did okay-ish. <laughs> oh my goodness, Catherine Rose, go to bed. I know where you live, it's too early there. <laughs> but it was funny because Maxine's graduation, pre-K, pre-kindergarten graduation, uh, started at 3 o'clock. The ceremony was underway and I was the acting cameraman so I was like taking all the pictures for everybody. And uh, eyes will not stay shut. <laughs> okay. Uh, but like apparently while I was taking pictures for all the kids is somehow I got designated to be the cameraman for the whole school. Uh, but I they started apparently texting me because uh, Travis had messed up his Twitch and he couldn't access the account. And if you do, if you know, if you've got a Twitch partner account or a Twitch uh, affiliate account where they pay you money, one of the requirements when they start like actually paying out for bits and stuff like that is that you tie the account to a phone, uh, that you would tie it to some secondary device, two-factor or the authentication uh, so my, it was tied to my phone and I was sitting there taking pictures and didn't notice but they were madly texting me and I think I got the message like right at uh, 4 o'clock uh, that they couldn't log on so if they got a later than expected start it was blame Maxine let's see okay it's refresh let me go check this guy now Do 
So, let's see, this guy should now have damage resist. Yay, look, is that... So remember, before his damage resistance was 14. Now it's 39.75. Uh, his magic resist, so when you have magic resist, that is, it's the resistance towards all magic, uh, is now 25.25. My skill is 101, I guess, so it's a 0.25. So, uh, maybe I can do... Seems you should probably have a little more magic resist than that. 25 is not that much. I think I'm going to double that one up. I did just kind of set those things. And let's see, did that already update? Okay, so I gotta, I'll have to restart to make that one work, I'm sure. But anyways, he should have twice that much, so he would now have 50. He'll have an extra 25 points of damage resistance and an extra 50, or 25 points of damage resistance, 50 points of magic resistance. 50 is getting up there where it's somewhat useful. Again, for those who know how the attunement curve works, it's actually a curve, so it does get a little, it's not perfectly linear in terms of power. So if you can cut 50 points off the top, that can actually be a pretty pretty good chunk. Alright, so that one's working. Pet speed train. Here's the one that'll be fun to test. Uh, let's see. So this is supposed to add to his... Let's see, we can look over here. This guy right here. That's supposed to add directly to his move speed. Currently his move speed is five. Five exactly. Uh, oh, let me put that down so we can go and do a little running test with this guy. Okay, we can already see that he can't even keep up. Let's see how far behind me he is when I get over here. Uh huh. And from over here, one thousand, two thousand. So some of it is he's slow to respond. I may have to go look at that. Oh, he didn't even. He's not doing it. Will you not attack a dummy? You'll attack these guys. So you perked up immediately. Yeah, these these training dummies back here are a different type of training dummy. They're kind of weird and half broken. All right, let's dismiss you. And we got our skill up high. Resummon you. So now our move speed should be 5.11. That is not what that's supposed to be. Uh, let me go look. So tame move speed right there applies to move speed. Oh, I didn't raise it yet, duh. I 
was raising the wrong skill. Okay, now this should be like 13 or 17 or something big. Uh, move speed 20. Holy cow, that's fast. I may have to lower that. <laughs> Let's see if it actually improves his effectiveness getting to him. Nope. What the crap, creature? So you can see he did not actually move any faster. Despite having a high move speed. Oh, did he go back to fight? You're not supposed to fight, dude. Join me. Oh yeah, there's buffs in this room. I forgot about that. I need to fix that. Alright, so now... He does not appear to move any faster. I'm going to have to investigate this a little more. Hmm. Yeah, so he definitely has a high move speed, but he's not actually moving faster. Good morning, famines. I hope I got questions piling up here. Let me just answer them straight off the stream. Yeah, and the CEO drama. I can't believe all that junk. Again, for those who don't know, I am not officially the CEO. I was never officially appointed the CEO for the company. Uh, I am the only officer of the company, though. Uh, but when the previous CEO stepped down, they left the spot vacant just because they didn't, I guess no one thought there was a reason to fill it or whatever. Uh, but I can't appoint myself CEO. <laughs> but it doesn't matter for a small company. We all know what we need to do. We all know what we do. Uh, and the board is largely responsible for many things. But they're responsible for assigning the person to do that stuff, which most of that stuff has fallen to me. So I do a lot of the CEO stuff along with Star, kind of split between us. But neither of us is officially the CEO. Star is on the board. Uh, I am the CTO and, and stuff. Yeah, the dumbest part is that I'd already called this out to the people I was talking to at Mass and Leopi and some other places was if I would just lie, there wouldn't be any drama. But if I lie, I would be breaking the regulations. I'd be breaking the law by lying and saying I'm the CEO when I was not the CEO. So their drama is that they want me to say something that's not true, which is silly. Anyways, back to stuff that actually matters. Can we get it? So moving by holding both mouse buttons down works when you use charge attacks, please. We've got, there's so many state issues, like the number of states involved with mouse and mouse click and the modes and all that stuff of, uh, you know, radical versus uh, targeting versus, uh, versus auto attack versus non-auto attack. Uh, that's one that may seem simple. It would have to be something like if you press... You have to press the right button first, and then the left button. Uh, now, there, as you guys saw, there was some crazy town stuff going on with targeting this release that I'm probably going to have to go look at. I'm going to probably go take a pass at re-cleaning up some of that targeting stuff. One and only has been doing it. Uh, mostly here lately, but that's something that originally was mine. I just want to make sure it's somewhat clean. 
do 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 do. Sorry, Liz, I'm talking as loud as I can without waking up Maxine. I'll pull the microphone closer. Oh, that's right, I owe John Marcus' song. I was trying to think what uh, song I could whisper out. Ooh. I've actually got a gain knob here. I guess I can turn that up, too. Let's see if that's any better. Here we go, here's one that can be whispered out. This is one I sing to Maxine fairly often. Of course, I don't know all the words, but I sing the words I know to her. Here comes the sun, do 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 do. Here comes the sun, and I say it's all right. A little darling, it's been a long, cold, lonely winter. A little darling, it feels like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun, do 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 do. Here comes the sun, and I say it's all right. A little darling, the smiles returning to the faces. A little darling, it seems like years since it's been here. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. And I say, it's all right. <laughs> all right. That's the best song I can whisper out at this time of morning. Uh, Salt Trip, you can ask for box status. So the status is when Richard was down last, which was two weeks ago. Uh, I'm out of signed maps is basically the problem. And most of the boxes I have to send need a signed map. Uh, so when Richard was down last time, I took him 200 signed maps, which should be enough to finish out most all the boxes. And he signed them. Uh, and he left them in his cabin and told me to come get them which I've been working on trying to get them, but I can't get to his cabin. Uh, I've been working with his property manager. His property manager actually went by his cabin and said he can't find them. So, uh, right now I'm blocked until I can get to Richard's house, uh, which may mean that I have to wait for Richard to come home. Uh, or come back to Austin the next time, which will probably be maybe next week. Uh, I haven't checked his schedule, but he's usually down about once a month. But, uh, and again, our nightmare, or my nightmare is that uh, he left them, like, on the porch and somebody took them, or that they got rained on or something. <clears throat> but uh, I had his property manager, Dale, go over and look, and Dale went and looked, and he couldn't find them, so I'm hoping Richard just left them inside or something like that. If not, don't panic. We've got enough maps so I can get more signed. It's just, we'll be out 200 souvenir maps that I could have been sending out to people. And no, I'm not 
I mean, I'm not touchy about the box stuff. I'm doing the best I can on that stuff. Uh, and uh, trying to hit the ones that are most upset about it, which I was doing. And I got through a hundred and something more boxes out of the 500 or so remaining that were either returns or didn't get an address in or, you know, just the shipping company screwed up for whatever reason. Or our website screwed up the address. Uh, but I got through, I've made it through more than a hundred of those. So I've got, again, I've got some more I've got to get done, but I'm doing the best I can. Uh, and I'm trying to, anybody who who is upset about it and really wants them, I'm trying to make sure and hit those people first. Uh, salt drip, if you want to whisper me your... Actually, you have two choices. You can either whisper, whisper me your information or your actual name, or you can just tell me your account name. Uh, if your account name... I can check and see, make sure you're on the list, because that's the other thing we've seen, is there's some people, there were roughly 100 returns, and those people are not necessarily on a list that we can access easily, uh, and return, or what we're finding is there's some people who were shipped a box, they, we didn't get a return on the box, uh, but they, uh, claim that they never got the box which uh, again I completely trust them I'm not not calling them a liar or anything it's just it's tough for us because now I'm trying to figure out how to handle those people who probably very legitimately yes you are on the list And it is very early where you are, so... You should be in bed, not not here. <laughs> uh, that is, Seazork is on the list. Uh, so Cypher Black, you're on the list still. Assuming you have the unfortunate uh, uh, or, uh, your, uh, initials. Oh, man, I couldn't even think of the word. So when you have the unfortunate initials of BM, and that's actually you, then yes, you're on there. <laughs> hey, Scooby-Doo, good morning, and thank you for the, thank you for the bits. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Grave Dancer. Grave Dancer. You, my Canadian friend, are on the list. Uh, and you should also be in bed. <laughs> oh, and Grave Dancer, you're in a category. Uh, I won't say what, but at the level you're at, you are the number one group. I actually have the boxes all set up. If you've seen behind me, there's boxes waiting back there that are like stacked. Uh, those are the boxes waiting to go out for the category that you're in. Uh, and super sorry, but trying to get those, that particular category out like last month. But I mean, it's again, I'm waiting on right now. I'm waiting on Richard unless I want to send uh, unsigned maps. And to be clear, Richard did spend a bunch of time when he was down last time taking care of it, but for whatever reason, his property manager can't find the, the maps that he signed. <clears throat> In worst cases, I'll just do something like I'll put a box together, send it to Richard in New York, get him to sign, you know, a hundred maps or something, and send them back so I can do unblock some of these horrible, you know, horribly overdue people who were very generous. Yes, you guys are both on the list, and nothing more needs to be done. Yep, I'm trying salt dripping, and again, this is not 
this fell in my lap uh, and it was one of those things there just wasn't a better person on the team to do it I mean I'm a horrible person to do it because I have a million things to do too but uh, I was a horrible person to do it but I'm kind of the only one to do it so no one else had room to store all the, the stuff and everybody else is also busy too I think that's one of those things I saw even saw a troll poster someone post a trolley message about what people do and they even they were like and Chris does CEO and Chris does shipping and Chris does the streaming and Chris is the designer and Chris does like going down the list so yes I'm I'm crazy busy but I fit it in when I can but yeah there's just no one better to do it the person who would have been the best person to do it unfortunately was uh is, is chaos but he's still like shipping involves a lot of standing and moving around and stuff and he's still dealing with his back problem he's still trying to I think he the current state in case uh, people know chaos uh, Rick uh, from the team he's actually still working for us but he just works on contract hourly uh, and works when he can when he can put in some hours he does it but he he's has major back problems and he's kind of at the point now which if anyone's had back problems you you probably understand this but he wants it to be better but he doesn't want surgery and so he's hoping uh, just with the uh, you know injections and other stuff that if he gives it long enough uh, that it will get better so he doesn't have to have surgery but I think he's kind of in that waiting period of like do I go do surgery or do I just you know wait for it to get better it's not like surgery is any surefire guaranteed thing anyways but but anyways hopefully that's going to get better for him because that's kind of been a major bummer because he's been out for down for like three months or more oh but he would have been the one who was shipping the stuff he was uh he was the uh, cs guy qa guy for us <clears throat> lancel lancer main uh, you clearly were not on the re-engagement email I sent out. I'm trying different re-engagement email tactics. Uh, but uh, the Baby Dragons will go live in R66 in two weeks. Just under two weeks. Uh, so yes, so there will be Baby Dragons. Do, 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 do. Baby Dragons. Do, 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 do. Uh, and that is not a task that's on me, but I check with B every week to make sure he's getting this done. I've already told him that the tamers will uh, burn down my house. <clears throat> or at least my virtual house in game, if baby dragons do not happen. Now what I didn't point out to him was that I'm throwing tamers uh, doing a bunch of stuff for him this release. So if it didn't happen, you guys would probably still have plenty to do and be happy with it. But, uh, oh, the other thing I was going to do this morning... I'm going to guess, based on it already being 4.43. Hey, thank you, Catherine Rose. Wow, good start off for the morning there. And I'm trying to remember. I need to look back at the logs, the the numbers. But uh, if you see the silver cloak I'm wearing, I was planning on giving, or the gold cloak I'm wearing, I was planning on giving the silver cloak to top 10 people. I was trying to remember if you were top 10 last month. Uh, but I'll be sending you probably a unique silver cloak that is just for streamers. And it's that cloak, in case you haven't seen it. That's the gold version, the silver version. Actually, I think the silver version almost looks a little better. Uh, because the frilly stuff blends in with it better. Let's see. <laughs> Cypher Black. Uh, I don't know when the burn down the house option will go live. Uh, I'm still looking at all the different... Elwyn Moon, why are you awake? I'm still looking at all the uh, the options so we can let you build houses through chunks. Oh, and Salt Drip. Uh, thank you very much for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you did the follow, you might as well do the raffle exclamation mark raffle because I am going to do that now because I'm already 10 minutes past when I said I would do it. I'll give you guys about 10 seconds to do exclamation mark raffle if you want to and then I'm going to draw. 
And this one's for the five piece one man band. Oh, timed out. But then I'm gonna get back to testing this stuff. So my guess is there's a AI problem with the pets and why they don't move faster. Uh, Cause you saw in there changing his speed from five to 23 through the skill did nothing. <laughs> All right, there, now salt drip got in. All right. And let me get out of Unity for a second. I'll get right back to testing the other ones. And again, Catherine Rose, thank you. Thank you so much for both the bits this morning and all the other stuff you do for the, the game and the community. All right, here we go. You guys ready? closing and it looks like there's about uh, looks, I think it's I've counted it before I think it's 45 so there's about 40 people in the drawing so 1 in 40 Kishafe you have won a fabulous fabulous super high polygon Uh, one one man five man band or whatever the heck that thing's called assuming you can get a name for you five piece one man band that's it kiss your face whoops definitely not if I misspell it nope it's not kiss your face well, if you tell me who, what your name is in game, I can send it to you. I'll go back over to Unity while I wait for that and test another skill. Okay, so I guess the next thing I need to test for the stupid wyvern pet thing, since he's not... Well, no, look, he just moved fast. Look. You see that? Because I was moving... I was more than five. So he does move faster. He just doesn't, when he attacks, he just kind of waddles up there like a, like a turtle. Let's see. He should be. Yeah, see, look, he does like the stupid slow walk up to get up to him. What kind of crap is that? Ugh. All right. Let me make a Jira for that. to know who to harass about that, that will be going on Undone, aka Bobby, aka Dr. Bob. And sorry for all the typing, but I gotta add a bunch of details. <laughs> yes, he's doing the harvesting walk. That's kind of what it feels like. <laughs> I'm 
try to add a lot of details when I'm writing up bugs, so I have good repro steps for it. Alright, so let's see, let me check his dexterity, because that's the other thing that stat is supposed to increase. So he's got a 400 dexterity, what the? Okay, that is crazy high. Uh, that is actually entirely too high, so let me go see. So times 12.5, maybe he starts off stupid high? What's my taming move speed modifier? So my taming move speed is 15.5. That is higher than it's supposed to be. That should be a 0 to 8. Let me go check my stat to see. Oh, whoops. Uh, yeah, that's that's wrong. <laughs> Basically, if they have a four hundred dex, uh, it'll make it really, really hard to hit them for most things. They'll have a lot of missed opportunities for everybody. Okay. So now that'll be correct uh, next time. Alright, so next up we have pet precision training. And this is will increase the attack precision, which increases the critical, the max crit damage. So again, this is you're kind of getting into the fine tuning and you know just the extra five or ten DPS type stuff. But it'll increase their max hit. Uh, so let me let me double check what the crit taming critical hit is melee crit damage modifier so if I look at his melee crit damage modifier melee critical whoops critical damage modifier so he's got a zero right now okay so let me dismiss him now, so he's got a zero in that now. And I think this is kind of a, it's a floating point number, but whatever the number is, it adds that many multiples of max damage to the crit, top end of the crit. So if it's a plus one, and you normally hit for 80, it'll add 80 to the max crit. So this should be like around uh, yeah melee crit damage multiplier now it went from so it went from zero to one so that means as my target is when you got it to a hundred it would add one so that would mean his crit maximum is should be one higher now the uh, maximum he'll do on a crit should be much higher so we'll go test that in just a minute uh, let's see Pet taunting train, so I know that one's already working. That's one I've already set up. But let me make sure. Oh, you know what? Oh, it is giving it okay. But let's go ahead and we'll do some quick test and see what his uh, damage is up to these days. So he was hitting for 70s max before. Oh, and he starts off with his first hit of 222. <laughs> but he was hitting for 70s before any of the skills went in. Uh, so now, there's an 89 normal, there's a 222. Uh, that's largely, that's probably due to the, uh, the critical hit number being up so 99 normal hit which means that his minimum crit's going to be over 100 
193 crit. Oh yeah, new raffle. Thank you very much. I was waiting if I clear, if I set the new raffle. It uh, erases, like it keeps a log of what the person who won says. And as soon as I start the new raffle, it clears that. And I didn't want to miss, uh, miss uh, Keisha's uh, information. Keisha Morgan Stern. All right, let's see. What's our next thing going to be? See, I know it's a limited number of people who can use them. Oh, it's that uh, hideous uh, neighbor annoying statue. Uh, this is when I keep seeing people setting it up like looking over a neighbor's yard. <laughs> I think I'm going to do one of those guys. Let me see if there's anything cool and featured that's new. Ether amplifier backpack's pretty cool. Ooh, the fire dancer outfit. I know there's at least a few uh, ladies out in the audience there, so I think we're going to do the fire dancer vault edition. Uh, just to be clear, male characters can wear this too. They get a slightly different effect. You're probably going for the humor rather than the uh, fire dancer outfit. Bam. I didn't know it said by that already. Yes, I did buy a copy. Okay. Do, do, do. So let me get back over to Unity. Oh, looks like I already killed that guy. So, anyway, so he went from. With the skills, he went from uh, max damage, non crit of in the 70s. I think 73 was as highest we saw. Uh, and max crits in the 130s to uh, max hits in the 99, I think we saw on some of those. Oh no, there's a max hit of 100, so at least 100. Uh, and crits of up to 250, 222, so yeah, so that's the crit part hitting. And of course, if you were attacking from behind, which is what a lot of pets end up doing, because, you know, they're if you're using them right anyways, and you're actually fighting them or doing something, the creature is likely facing you unless you're using it as a taunt creature. So... There you go. That's right, it's the harvesting walk. Uh, but he'd be hitting from behind more often and hitting for like 240. Now I do want to get that uh, again. I'm going to keep looking at this stuff and remember that the wyvern is a T, basically a tier 10 pet. Uh, and my goal is to get some tier 15 versions of everything into the game. Uh, so this is not the toughest thing. If this were like an obsidian destroyer bear, again, you'd see that much more be even tougher uh, and this is also with, without using any taming artifacts J Nord, can the raffle item be added to the entry spam? Have entered the. Ooh, I wonder. Maybe? Uh, let's see. I don't see any stats, or I don't see that 
information available to me on the giveaway. Again, though, this is one of those things as I, I've already written for, as you guys know, I've already written a few plugins for this thing. I was already thinking of like rewriting the plugin for this tool as well. Uh, just because I keep coming up with more and more stuff that I want. I wish it could do. Oh, wait, there's settings. Let's see. Uh, let me go check. Hold on. I did find the settings for it. I did find the string de definition. I don't know that there's a define for... Labs chat bot scripts. Trees. Doesn't list anything here. something there they don't list the variable name but I'm gonna take a guess They don't list. Uh, they have replacement strings. If you see that dollar sign prize after the thing, uh, the name right there is replaced. The string is dollar sign entries. I was trying to guess what they might have used for the prize uh, string, but they may not expose that. Hold on, let me look on their GitHub. found another site that has a bunch of chatbot scripts. Neat. Uh, let's see. Hold on. Do, 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 do. into making it so it tells what the item is. Data 
object. Yeah, it looks like that may not be exposed in there. So I may have to write my own to to get my own prize bot that does cool stuff. Yeah, because the other thing is I would like it to. I guess I'm trying to think how that would work. People always like enter the prize bot like multiple times and they raffle multiple times. I wish I had some way where it could display who's raffled somewhere. Maybe something like a little scrolling window of names so you could see who's in the raffle. Hmm. Oh, hold on. Mojito's on the move. Uh, but, so the taunt is in there. The dexterity is in there. The critical hit. So now, again, we've seen his max damage more than double. Uh, with just the skills as they are. Again, I'm going to, for those who are know how I work, so this release, the Tame and stuff, I'm going to have it tuned down a little bit. Uh, because it is much easier to tune to add power later than it is to take power away from you guys later. Uh, so giving you something and then slowly turning up the power is usually how I, I will do things until it feels like it's at a good level. Let's see, though. Uh, so that's the taming side of things. Now, the next thing I was going to do was add, go work on a boat. Uh, so that's going to be not in here. Yeah, somebody mentioned the have them hang around. The longer a pet hangs around, the tougher it gets. Uh, I think the thing I'm going to add, just because it sounds, again, fun and interesting and feels like it adds a little skill and other stuff, is whenever you summon your pet, uh, that some pets will get a bonus to every time they get a killing blow on something, uh, they'll get a buff. And then that buff can stack, so like you know, maybe up to like five of them. So if they get like five killing blows, so that kind of be the idea is that you pull your pet out. Tamed or otherwise, but you pull your pet out, and every time they get a killing blow on something, they get a buff. You know, that maybe is kind of a little like speed boost and strength boost. Yeah, Mojito's down there, you just can't see him because it's kind of dark in here. Not kind of dark, it's really dark. Let's see if I can get enough light. Uh-oh, people are adding to the questions list. Right, let's see if I can get enough light in here so you can see him. Nope. I can get me well lit up, but it's not enough to do mojito. Alright, so next up, I'm going to go play with the boat. Shep, are you really on a boat? <laughs> hey, Jay Nord, it's probably more like 20. Not 23, probably more like 20. He's up and around a bit, but... Uh, Deco...
All right, let's see. I'm gonna go find this asset. Uh, so for those who didn't hadn't heard, this is kind of one of those things that just happened, sort of by accident. Let's say someone else added this too. Oh, I bet I know why. Uh, but I was looking on uh, Tuesday, no, maybe Wednesday of last week, Thursday of last week. Oh yeah, and the big greyhounds, that's everything I've heard about the big greyhounds, uh, especially if they're rescues. Mm -hmm. It's like, of course, they work so hard all the time, but then as soon as you get them as pets, all they want to do is, like, just relax and smile. <laughs> We've thought about getting a big greyhound as well. But uh, little greyhounds, a little, little less maintenance. And we've got a pretty big yard, but I still worry about it for a greyhound. We've got, like, a lot of, for a big greyhound. I worry about it for Mojito as well, but we've got a lot of space to run but it's there's a lot of like rocks and holes and stuff like that I worry about getting a big greyhound out there and letting them run oh but this uh, ship came about totally by accident do 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 uh, I was doing that level design thing. I was like, hey, I kind of need a pirate ship to go in here. And I looked at the pirate ships that we had, all the ships that we had for houses. I think I could use one of those as a pirate ship in counter space. Liz, yes, I am aware of the trophy issues. Uh, that is my fault. Uh, and it'll be an easy fix, and they'll just switch back to what they were. They'll switch back to the chairs. Uh, for those who don't know, the deco trophies turn into fish trophies. Whoops. Uh, again, that was me screwing up because I forgot of Unity's changes to uh, prefabs that impact some of that stuff. So you can no longer just dupe an I item and change some stuff on it and check it in. But yes, uh, aware, and they will magically change back here in a day or so. Uh, I didn't see the issue on the light. I'll look at those too. I'll, I'll get, I think there's already some bugs created on them. Uh, so I'll get those taken care of here in the next day or two. If list hasn't already done it he's uh, as yeah as much as like the people say I do everything on the team it's like no I do everything visible on the team uh, and like list cleans up so much of my so many of my mistakes and sloppiness and errors like that type stuff same thing with the whole team I do all the visible tedious stuff so that everybody else can actually do the work all right so let's see I think I just take that. I think that is what I want. Uh, so, oops. Well, that's kind of neat. Okay, there we go. Apparently part of the ship is rotated 90 degrees. Not allowed to zero out the rotations. So anyways, so the other morning I was working on level stuff. I was like, I wish I had a pirate ship. And uh, that I could have like an, an encounter on that was big enough to have an encounter on. And I w went and looked at our pirate ships. Uh, and while they're great for like houses and deco, you know, like you know, decent space for decos. They just don't have nearly enough room to have a pirate battle of any sort on it. Uh, 
Uh, hold on. Oh, I think I got two of those. I'm gonna go see what's going on with those. Oh, but anyway, so I went and found, I like, just went to the Unity store and there's an asset I'd seen before that I'd like kind of looked at and almost bought and I was like well screw it I'm gonna buy it it looks like it'll be big enough to have a uh, encounter on uh, which as you can see this is like plenty big to have like fighting spaces uh, I fix up the ramps so NPCs can go up it the doorways work for NPCs and I can actually just remove them if I need to uh, but then I was like the other day on the stream after I did that I was like hey I wonder if this thing will fit on a on a uh, lot uh, and it fits perfectly almost completely filling from front to back the castle lot <clears throat> uh, we rarely there's not so when we got started we used a lot of store stuff uh, for our houses we have exactly zero houses uh, that are anything other than home grown uh, so this would be one that would be this would be kind of a first and that we were using this and I didn't expect it and again I think it's just pure pure luck that it works perfectly uh, but it's actually set up it's the quality on again we're gonna take a quick texture pass on it I think to improve just a few things I think some of these uh, texture UVs need to need a little work And we will be pulling off all of these decos, probably. Again, because we want to give you guys just a clean space to, you know, clean slate to deco however you want to. things a chunk at a time uh, but like looking at this like this the layout was fine the size was just right uh, again this is a store a unity store bought asset that somebody made uh, but everything on it seemed to be set up pretty well uh, so what I was saying we would probably do is just throw this in as an option for if I add this uh, make it an option for the Lord of the Isle guys. Uh, anybody about the Lord of the Isle? Uh, which, again, I forget how many, like six or eight people so far. There's still some more out there. Hope we can fill up one of those sets uh, so we can start planning uh, dinner with the people. See if we can get a time set up for dinner with everyone. Uh, but anyways, just making this a choice that they get uh, where they can have this, and then if we add it to the store just keep it fairly exclusive to you know so everybody doesn't have one everyone who has a castle lot doesn't have one uh, add it to the store but add it for like a really high value to keep it exclusive for the Lord of the Isle people uh, but This morning I was going to go and see if I could get this thing set up somewhat. Hold on, let me try. Did I already clean this? I think I already did this once. Yes, I did. Okay. So that's what's going on there. So hold on one second. Bam, delete that. Uh, but again, that's one of those things for a while we had not... We had not been using any... Hold on. What is going on there? 
we've not been using any store-bought assets like we did at one point that there was some item that someone requested and we added it as a store-bought item we actually purchased it from like the base asset before we set it up we purchased that from like turbo squid or something uh, and the trolls had a freaking field day like screaming about it endlessly uh, and that was like probably two years ago uh, that how dare we use someone else's asset and sell it in our own store as if it were ours which I mean honestly makes zero sense whatsoever uh, and because of that we didn't we didn't we stopped using store assets uh, so that's kind of stupid on our part and we're gonna stop doing that we're gonna start using store assets and we'll use them wherever we want to however we want to uh, again I mean this is a purchased asset but it'll probably take two weeks or, or more of work to get it to a point where we can actually use it in game Uh, so yeah, so I mean, and again, it, it's one of those things where it's like some people yelled and got all butthurt over something and then it made the game worse for everybody else. We're done making the game worse for everybody else. Uh, we'll add stuff, whether it's crafted stuff or store stuff or whatever, we're doing the best thing we can, which is, and again, when we usually when we add stuff to the store, we'll add, for most things, we don't normally do it for all house types, but for most things we'll add you know, some type of crafted version, and then we'll have the store version that's just a fancier version of the same thing. Under your pillow, buddy. And this is, he's got this black blanket on him. You might be able to just, oh, you can just make him out. If you look really close, you can just, oh, you saw him there for a second. Bud. It's right there. <laughs> there, now you can kind of see him. See, he's down there. That's just light for my monitor. Okay. Let's see. So again, this I'm just going to take a quick pass to get the prefab set up for the house uh, and see if I can do deco surfaces for it uh, so that we can see how the deco stuff goes. And that was another thing that when I looked at this, I was pleasantly surprised because it kind of feels like the deck is curved. I think that's just an optical illusion because the railing is curved. So yeah, so it looks like the deck is curved, but it's actually the railing that's curved and the deck is perfectly flat, uh, which is something that we have to have so that we can do deco surfaces you guys can place that do 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 let's see big boxes you're gonna go away oh, I thought I already had the prefab opened Oh, it's open in the prefab prefab, the sub prefab. I see. Oh, I missed it. Uh, Sorry, pools are closed. That's a great name. 
thank you, thank you for the follow. Again, you're just watching early morning. I woke up early. Uh, I'm a dev on Shroud of the Avatar. Uh, and when I wake up early, I usually just come in and work, even if it is on a Saturday. Uh, so I'm in here just doing a few random things, not on any schedule, just kind of extra stuff on the side. I just got done testing uh, some of the taming changes that are going in this this release. And everything seemed to work except for one part, which is creature speed is not actually being reflected in the creature. And I'm waiting on a dialogue right now. You guys can't see it, but trust me, it's there. Yep, still waiting on that dialogue. Dialogue you can't see. There we go. So that's in case you are have used Unity uh, and haven't used it lately. They redid how prefab stuff works. Uh, which brought some good stuff with it. The good stuff being that you can do nested prefabs, which is something we've always wanted. Uh, but they ab absolutely destroyed productivity for anything in Unity on a big project. There's some aspect of it that, again, they don't test on a big project. They should be testing on a big project. Uh, but they, the performance of it is absolutely horrible. Uh, anything you do with the prefabs now. Even if you have auto save turned off, that's one of those things, but it is absolutely horrible. Yeah, and uh, it seems like they just added some verification code or something for prefabs. But whatever it's doing, it's looking, it seems like it's doing a prefab verification when you touch anything. Which then goes and like verifies against prefabs in the project. Now, if you're in a project with 100 files, that's not a big deal. If you're in a project with 140, 180,000 files, which is more like what ours is, uh, doing some type of verification on against other prefabs or looking up objects, uh, it gets insanely slow. Uh, but again, is as not the CEO, but the guy who tries to make some decisions and help out the company wherever I can. Uh, I am trying to reach out to Unity again, yet again, to see if there's some type of like deal or partnership or something. Uh, that we can have with Unity, where they take a take more responsibility again the thing we would love is if hey like just let us fix your engine for you please we can go and find these things and fix them yeah and you now have to go into the prefab editor uh, rather than editing and you can see this was a nested prefab so I was editing a prefab already and I went to modify something in that prefab and guess what I had to zoom into the next prefab And for those who are watching, the thing I'm trying to do right here is remove all the objects that are not really part of the ship. And we're gonna see these lanterns. That's another thing that's like, eh, the quality's okay. Uh, but my guess is what we're going to do is end up making sure that the all of these spaces all these spots have deco surfaces on them uh, and then just give you guys like the lantern so you can go and place them if you want to rather than having them as built-ins Uh, 
Uh, and these lanterns are also a little odd in that they are they don't actually have any light. 5.30, begin count. Oh, is that when I'm supposed to do my giveaway? <laughs> yeah, so these aren't actually lights. Uh, they're actually just uh, bloom. They're glows. When you see, like, we've got some creatures, or like you see lava or something like that, uh, those usually we don't put light on those things. Hey, good morning, Wolfton. Uh, we don't usually put light on those things, actual lights on those things. Instead, we just have them as uh, glows, which is what you see here. It's just a basically kind of a super bright texture that makes it pretty easy to fake a light. But as you can see, they look like they're providing light. They provide some bloom, but they don't actually provide light to the stuff around them, which in this case is probably better because uh, that's one of those things we'll have to watch this thing for is the performance because it did appear to be made as a single large object and we'll want to be careful on the uh, how many polygons lights touch because each light that touches an object will force a re-render on that object to handle the shadows so big objects reduce draw calls, uh, but they also, big objects with lots of lights touching them, end up re-rendering multiple times. You can get into a bad situation where you're killing yourself on poly counts. You reduce your draw calls, but you kill yourself on poly counts, so you've got to be careful. That's, I've had a few people in the stream who are like, you should combine those objects. And it's like, no, I'm not going to combine those objects. It's like combining this object with anything would be problematic. Uh, so that's good that it looks like it's got it broke things up at least, but it did break them up front to back. It looks like that's the oh, that's funny. They call them the desk. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be deck, not desk. <laughs> so they broke that part up. What's the outside of the ship? Is that one big object? Yep. One ginormous object. Now the good news is we can do some things for optimization on these. Again, because the, the danger is uh, you can see this is a single mesh. And the single mesh has... Oh, you know what? It's only got 3,400 poly, so that's not that bad, honestly. That probably wouldn't, wouldn't do so much. Wouldn't be so painful. Uh, but what I was going to say is we can do, we can set per object, we can set whether or not it casts shadows. So for some of these things, like for that piece where like every single light on the entire ship would be uh, forcing it to re-render, just because it's a big giant object, we may go and set that to not cast shadows. Because really what you're going to care about casting shadows are the decks and the walls the doorways and that type of stuff so if you have light in here it doesn't go to the floor below and it doesn't go to the floor above and it doesn't extend past the wall but whether or not it goes out the sides of the ship whether or not these side things cast a shadow we probably don't care it's one of the things I wanted to check for which is the other windows this is one I said we were going to have to we're gonna have to fix up uh, because it is the window itself is not set to actually be translucent, which is silly. Because you guys want to look out these windows, I am pretty sure. Uh, Gia Tareg, yeah, that's. That's, this was one that I was just telling the story that it was kind of just stumbled across it. And currently we don't have a single house that in the game that we that you can sell or craft that is something we didn't create. 
but this is one when I was setting up an encounter this week I found this ship uh, that was a model from the store uh, it needs a little love in terms of quality there's a few things I would probably change in terms of I think they skimped on poly counts in a few places oh looks like we have to go fix that that's my fault though uh, and uh, like I was saying, there's some texturing stuff that needs to be done. I think we need to pull the UVs down on the sides of the ship. But uh, other than that, like things on it were pretty darn good in terms of setting it up for a house. So I bought it to, so I could do a pirate encounter uh, because it has a great, I mean, this is like a huge space out here. Uh, but uh, then I was looking at it, and actually I think it was a player that said, hey, you should make that a house. And it's like, I don't think that's going to fit on a lot. And then I went and tried it, and sure enough, it fits on a uh, castle lot only. Uh, so yeah, so this could be a castle water lot where all this whole thing, and if I showed it to you, basically the, the castle lot would go from here to here. It is freaking massive. But there, there's some, there's a little love that needs to happen for it. Again, as I was saying, I think like these windows. Let me see if I can actually do anything with these right now. Portalarium spec transparent. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't have Photoshop installed right now. Uh, and I don't think uh, paint.net has a way to do alpha. I'd have to get GIMP or Photoshop. So I won't do that now, but that's... this uh, The texture that's used for that thing. Really just needs... someone needs to go in and cut out the alpha on those things. And I can cut out the window pretty quick. Or I'll do that and I'll just undo it. Again, this is the super hacky. Just to demonstrate what it might look like. I saw Elwin in there mentioning Elwin. That's uh, last weekend, Maxine. I was like, Maxine, what are we doing this weekend? And she said, Dad, let's go to the fair. <laughs> oh, Maxine, no. It only comes like for six weeks a year and it's over. She was ready to go to that fair again. I thought star 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 did transparency so it should uh, not sure what star 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 is <laughs> oh paint.net uh, yeah uh, it does transparency I haven't seen a way to edit transparency so you can save things as transparent. If you open something, it's transparent. 
Let me go back over here and see. This was just the quick so I could see what problems I might run into. Because there may be some geometry here that like they don't have. If it's opaque on the inside, it may actually be going into the hull of the ship. So they didn't actually cut a hole in the ship. And instead of doing that, they made the windows opaque. Surely they cut a hole in the ship. Well, what is that behind it? We've got that on both sides. Yeah, that's kind of what I was... Well, no, it looks like there might be a window there. I guess I can just do... Yeah, see, that's what I thought. So this is one of those where we'd need to come... We're going to have to come in and edit these things because you guys need windows on your ship. But what they've done is they have a solid hole. And the reason I was like, why would they make these windows totally opaque? Yeah, paint.net, so it doesn't let you post a URL, so I thought she was posting a URL. It's kind of stupid. But that's why they have opaque windows, which is what I was afraid of, which is why I was doing a little test. Yeah, these boards are part of what I was saying, need to have their UV scaled down. But again, that would be a pretty easy uh, edit for them to just go and edit, add some windows. And it's also, this is the type of thing too, that if we want to release the ship now, because we want to get the Lord of the Isles people, their, all their stuff ASAP. Uh, Travis has been working on the land home. Of course, this one could go as a land home or a water home. But we could release it and then come back later and add the window cutouts just when Damon has time. All right, let's see what else I do I need to take a look at. I think all the ropes and stuff are fine. See, they like build in like these wall pieces are built into that stuff. I kind of want to keep those the wall planks. Although maybe that's another one where we could just give you guys the deco. Looks like the way they have them set up, they kind of scrunch into the wall. So maybe not. open prefab. Yes, save the changes. Alright, one minute while I open us another prefab very slowly. So yeah, so they included all these beams and poles and stuff in there. Yeah, so Elwyn, we could cheat on the collision, but then there's some other stuff that, like, if we made these into decos, you guys can just place. Like, that's kind of unacceptable to have 
they don't have uh, tops on any of them. So if you guys place them, you know, we'd have to set it so you can place it anywhere, unless we don't add custom code to handle it. So you can only place this object on this ship. And in the right spot, you'd still have like this type of, type of crap that we'd have to go back and redo the mesh on this. I think for most of them, we probably just want to leave them in there. We just want to take out all the take out all that stuff. groupings on things. Now the door groups, that's another thing I've got to come back afterwards and I'll have to rig those up so that they can... Well, let's see if they were smart. Here's the test. Are they smart? If they're smart, if I rotate this value, then the door will open. Oh, okay. It's not that value. That dies value. There we go. Okay, so they, they're not too dumb. So yeah, again, this model it's a little lower poly count than I'd like to see in a model. And again, the texture needs a little bit of work, and there's some things like window cutouts and stuff like that. Uh, but he's not... It's obviously a game dev who made this, so... So these doors will be pretty easy to, to hook up so that they can open, you know, using our script. So good job, stranger who made this asset. Do 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 do. Dun 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 dun. Uh oh, I missed some pots. Plates and planks. Oh yeah. Gotta kill the planks. Oh, I see a medieval candlestick. inner reliance interesting so I think I'm actually going to take out these lanterns and do what I said which is we can take out these lanterns uh, and then give them to you as decos and as long as we have deco surfaces set in the proper places then uh, you guys will be able to come back and put lanterns wherever you want to rather than us doing it if we put them in as is, they, you know, we'd have to modify them some so that they're interactable anyways. But yeah, I think, well, and after I said I'm going to delete them, I left them in there, but I think we'll remove those guys and we'll just put them in as, as uh, decos. Alright, so here's the inside cleaned out, so I guess that's next up. I need to go remove the cannons. And again, these cannons, I have mixed feelings on. There's some parts of them, like the general shape is good. I'm not a fan of this, whatever this metal texture they did. I like the engraving in it, and I like the detail. It's just... Uh, and again, they have they have specular on it. Why would you make a cannon? So for those who don't know, there's kind of two types of material uh, stuff. There's specular, which is kind of what games always used to use, where there's a separate map that is the shows kind of the reflection values for things. So there's a specular, and then with the more modern stuff, there's also a metallic shader, and so you have a metal cannon 
is using a specular shader instead of a metal shader. <laughs> a little puzzling. Let me see if I can do anything to improve that. So I guess first let me try tweaking up some stuff here. And this is showing just some tuning on specular and how it works. Oh, and I guess the other thing was the normal map was set to a half. I've actually seen that already on a few things. sure these textures are at full resolution. They are. Yeah, it's probably hard for you guys to see the the canon texture, the normal map very well for it, but that's this is again I think the one thing this guy did not do a great job of is his normal maps are all like his normal maps and his UV mapping is just not not stellar. And the thing on his UV mapping is just the density. His he's got very inconsistent pixel densities, meaning that like he's covering this area with a section that's probably 128 by 128 pixels, but he's covering this area over here with a section that's you know four times that much, even though it doesn't need as much detail. But it still does not look that good. Okay, but I'm going to try and give this thing a little pass and see if I can do something better for it. Dog is on the move again. Some of this you really only get the full effect with the lighting, so let me go and just add a light to the scene right here. Oh. Okay, so now we've got an actual light, so we can see what it looks like with light. It's uh, pretty important. Let me get to the, there we go, Canon color. Okay, so that was the right one. So now I'm trying to tune this so that this looks better. So these are some values you can actually go and look. It's kind of fun because if you want to do, uh, these are supposed to be like PBR type stuff, uh, physically based rendering. You can actually go and look up the values for like what is the, you know, what is uh, the uh, the numbers for copper or the numbers for iron or the numbers for whatever, and you can actually go look up those exact values. Or this had his own normal map set to 0.5. I'm not sure why he would have... Oh, I remember why, because he had... Down here he had a second normal map that was being applied as a detail map that was set to 0.5. 
except I'm not sure why you would have that as a detail map. Uh, usually, if you you guys may be able to read this, but detail maps are so you can go back afterwards. Like if you want to add, like do a high resolution or a low resolution big texture that covers the whole thing, and then you want to have some smaller repeating texture to add, you know, detail to it. Uh, you can do that. Like for this, I could go and add. detail texture to it like this is not the right thing but uh, but then the usual things you'll add that detail to texture to it but you'll do it at a higher tiling value so it's tiled eight times so now you can see that same thing you can add in add in some really fine details across it like if you want to add like a pattern uh, to something. So the thing I added to it is not the right thing. I added a wood grain to it to demonstrate. But you can kind of see. You can add in the wood grain. Tune that up. And again, you can change that to be different levels of uh, packing. So you can have some finely packed. Whoops. I don't even know how that happened. There we go. But for a lot of things, that's it's really important, like rocks and stuff like that, where you know the mesh is going to be big. You can't have a texture that is big enough, high enough resolution to give good detail to the rock. So instead, what you do is you add, you do like a big rock texture, and then you do a finer rock detail texture uh, that maps to it. My morning tech talk. Actually, that's more of an artist talk, but I'll do it for him because artists like to sleep in. Uh, so, I think right around in... And that is one of those things that's supposed to be uh, near one smoothness for metals. So that makes it pull out the details and that stuff. And again, I'm looking at this as one of those other things you got to be careful about that usually I'll yell at junior artists for doing. Which is, they get there and they just like finally scrutinize stuff by like getting like right up close to it or whatever. Like you got to see it how you're going to see it in the game or else it's meaningless. Of course you can go and find flaws if you get up and really close and look at stuff. But how does it look at a distance a player would normally see that, which is something more like this. It's like, hey, you know what? We're already looking pretty good. Uh, and uh, my only guess for why he was using spec instead of uh, metal is just because this is a, he used the same. It's one piece, the wood part and the. Oh no, is it two pieces? Uh, so it's, he has the wood piece and the cannon piece, but they're all using the same shared materials, so they're all broken out into chunks. Uh, but it doesn't matter because uh, they all share the same material, but that's my guess is he was using spec because it has metal and non-metal stuff in it. But again, your focus point when you look at the cannon is not to look at the wood, you're looking at the cannon itself, making it look cool. All right, so we'll call that better. All right, so I need to get rid of the cannons, though. But don't worry, those changes will be saved. If I take the cannons, is that just taking the cannons, or does something else get deleted with those? Looks like I'm just taking the cannons. All right, then I think I can just delete those guys. Okay, so now you're kind of getting an idea of how much space there is in this thing, which is, again, why I was like, you know, I know it's store-bought or, you know, made by somebody else other than us. 
Like, this is freaking perfect for us. And again, we're just setting this up as just an option for Lord of the Isle people. Uh, and yes, I do need to go pull out all those... those lanterns. Uh, I'll do that in a minute, though. All right, down to the next level. And again, all these things that you see in here, if you're like, no, don't delete that, I think that's cool. Uh, so just with the same thing we do with all of our houses, we ship them empty and then you guys can fill them with whatever you want to. Because if we leave them here as, you know, in the model, then you guys won't be able to move them or remove them or whatever. Liz, uh, I think Star should change that. That's again, that's one of those things. I think he's okay with pulling off some band aids now. And but yeah, I think in, on the thing it says it's only free for a year or two. But again, I think we're we're kind of in the mode, and I'm probably the one who's pushed this more than Star by quite a bit, even of like, let's stop uh, crushing, crippling the game and. And uh, because of a few bad decisions that were made by people who are no longer with the company years later, like years after the decisions were made. And I think that was one just made to satisfy one of those type things. Oh, little buddy, you need to be covered up. Hold on, bud. So that's when I would think we'll probably just, I hope we'll just change. I'm going to change it. Uh, but yeah, so anyways, any of these decos in here, if you want them, you can have them, but we'll just make them so they're craftables or something. You can put them in here if you want to. Alright, so let's see. I'm going to guess... Yep. Okay, let's see. So that's, again, they included these support beams. Now I gotta go edit all these guys. and then that's the cabin wall okay good I think I will delete these lights while I'm in here and the musketoons whatever a musketoon is and the planks and the sacks small box not the stairs Still cannons in here. Get down the floor. Oh, it's in another section. Okay, got it. Again, let me make sure that's not going to negatively impact things. Yeah, these are another one. Uh, these guys here that I'll have to hook up. Let me make sure they did this right. So there you go. So they did these right too. So I can actually leave these on the ship. 
and then we can apply we've got code so it remembers uh, like Windows hey thank you very much Housen TV we've got logic for Windows and shutters and stuff that you can open uh, that works similar system to the door but it remembers like which ones were open but it does not remember it between coming and leaving I think I'm trying to remember I think that's one of those where we could add it uh, but we have it not remember the state uh, because we don't want to have all that extra state to send every time and, and again you can imagine for this thing it's like we'd be sending the state for like a hundred extra objects just for this one one boat although obviously this is a pretty exceptional boat and not a not a normal thing okay we're getting kind of clean down here whoops a lot of interior groups oh and let me do the giveaway uh, Housen TV, if you just joined, feel free to do a raffle. Uh, if you play the game, great. If not, maybe it'll be a reason to play the game. Uh, the next one up is a fabulous, the next prize up is a fabulous, I say fabulous, fire dancer outfit. Let me model it for you in game. Hold on. Oh, I timed out. Ah. Uh. Hold on, I'm going to go model the fire dancer outfit for you guys. I'm still female. I should probably change that back to being male. Uh, for those who are wondering why I'm Atos is suddenly a female, that was a few weeks ago. We had a bug that was only happening to females. I had to turn myself to female to test it. So, but anyways, here's the fabulous. I say fabulous prize we're giving away. Uh, so, I will be, and this is the fire dancer outfit. Uh, again, this is in the, I think it's a new item that just came into the vault, or has been in the vault, maybe? I don't even know. Uh, but it is only there for a while, and for those who don't know how the vault works, uh, like stuff will cycle in and out of that over time. Uh, so once stuff leaves the vault, it may not be back for like a year or something, so it's kind of like the seasonal stuff. But they're old items that we gave away, like we had in the past with some package or some giveaway or something uh, but they'll cycle out here soon so again get them while they're hot but let's do the giveaway and for uh, Housen TV in case you don't know much about the game we there's a million things you can craft the only stuff we really sell are premium visuals there's no we don't sell power stuff we really just sell premium visuals so you can have an outfit you may just not be able to craft a fire or dancer outfit like this but again it's visuals closing the giveaway and picking winner Gia Treg you sir are the winner of this fabulous fabulous outfit I know you're super excited. I can tell. <laughs> and that is not a name in game, so you're going to have to give me a name in game if you want it. All 
right, I'll try to keep an eye out for, for that. I'm gonna get up the next the next prizing. Dun 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 dun. Let's see, I did one of those. Maxine is going to be up soon, so I'm gonna do one more uh, biggish type item, and that'll be the last one. And then when she gets, when she wakes up, she always comes in here. She has a routine that her morning routine on a Saturday is she'll come in here and say, and open the door. And I always think she's coming to say hi to me, and she comes oh, or comes and opens the door and says, "Mojito, come snuggle with me." Uh, and then Mojito will get up and run out and go snuggle with her for a while. Hey, thank you, Jacob von Buchen. Thank you for the host, kind sir. So anyways, so when she comes and does that, that means I'm just about done with the stream, because that means it's banana pancake time, and we got to get our, our banana pancakes going. I'm sure you understand. All right, so we will do... I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys, whoever wins, you get the choice of a cherry tree or a giant Grim Reaper statue. That's now open. We'll see if Gia Tareg ever responds. They may have collapsed on their keyboard if they're from America. Trying to do a playthrough. Fell asleep at the keyboard. If they haven't responded by the uh, next giveaway, then I will do... Uh, I'll just draw twice and give away the Fire Dancer outfit and... The second thing. All right, let's see. Big chest. Oh yeah, what do these chests look like? Yeah, I mean, that'd be a neat. Again, let's see. Did they do them right? There we go. Yeah, so this could be another chest that we give you guys. And a lot of their stuff had uh, has some kind of piratey feel to it, so it kind of goes along too with our trying to get more more piratey stuff in the game. Yeah, and this I'm still trying to figure out. I one I'm wondering if this is like someone who is a uh, English is a second language. Only a little English is a second language because there's all these stuff like you saw the earlier things they're calling the decks desk and they call cups caps I don't think that's like a pirate thing I think that's just oh you're not seeing the boat sorry see that's you're supposed to throw a bit at me so I know because I get the beep when I get a bit <laughs> there you go yeah they call the the deck desks, or decks, desks, and the cups, caps. So I'm kind of wondering if it's in English as a second language. Doesn't bother me at all. not an object, that is a wall. Again, not an object, that's a wall. Alright, let's see. Okay, so that one should be cleaned out. Let me save that one. <laughs> Thank you, Liz. 
I want all the bits. All the bits. Cool. <clears throat> well, I love the bits. Uh, I do really. The main reason I do this again is for the exposure to the game. Uh, and if I'm not playing the game, I mean, it's also it's exposure to, hey, guess what? We kind of do an open dev uh, policy where we you know, work with you guys on things. So let me go back in and I think I'm going to take care of these lights now and just remove them. I removed them from all the other floors, I just didn't do this one. And then again, the reason is that way you guys, if you want to, you can still hang those exact same lights up once we put the decos in, the deco surfaces in. Uh, but you don't have to. <coughs> Sorry about that. Heel Keeper. Some interesting names. Yeah, the part that's weird is it's a, just a bit surprising. Is he did? Whoops. That one. Nope. On these, he did cutouts in the deck, or in the ship, in the hull, but for the windows, he did not. So he did do some cutouts, he just didn't do them for windows, and instead used opaque glass. what they did with that uh, to get the ship name up there. Alright, so it looks like I need to get rid of the lights on this first deck and I may be just about done removing stuff. Actually, it looks like I can remove this entire group, exterior group A. All right, that's kind of odd. It looks like, yeah, he did like a lot of these things separately. For those who are worried about like uh, performance of having a bunch of those things in there, uh, it's honestly not that bad. Uh, you guys can't see it, but we use ins GPU instancing. Arca, why are you up? It's Saturday. Oh, I was going to remove that C panel. I was actually, while I was looking at that, the reason. I was looking at it was I was thinking that uh, that could be something that we do for these where we make a, a customized deco you guys can hang there if you want to but of course you always kind of already get your own customized deco because you can do your own uh, your own heraldry and just do a special her heraldry for it Liz Kimber, uh, 
right now list is going to be super busy. He had been working on the Lord of the Isle house stuff and doing a ton of cleanup work and a ton of other tedious crap. Uh, and he basically begged to, like, can I please just go and make a high level map for players? So uh, he's probably this next release, he's going to be doing nothing but working on one or two uh, high tier maps, high end maps for, for uh, players. Just because high end players, again, we got to get them out of upper tiers and some of those other places and give them some options. Yeah, and, and Cypher Black, I mean, that is one of the things I'm investigating in, in terms of making it so we can have chunks that fit together. But uh, that's not officially on Episode 2 list yet. But again, a lot of the stuff I do is not on Episode 2 list. I kind of, as you guys know, like we've always been agile, but we're trying to be even more agile now and focus on, like, if we see something and it feels better than what we're actually, we have on our list of stuff that we've said we're going to do. Uh, we do what feels better, what feels like it's going to make a better, bigger impact on the game. Alright, so now we may be to a good point. Alright, let me save that and we can go run around the ship now and see. Oh, actually, let me go... Let me go disable the doors uh, so that we can actually run around without me having to hook up the doors just yet. Ship door. these hatches I'll have to I'll put these back in but this is where the actual and it looks like it'll probably have to be like a one of our teleporter type things where you double click on it or use it Alright, so in just a second we'll be able to run around the entire empty ship so you can get an idea of how much deco space there is. One more save and then I can go back and play. Nizar, can you give me ore to experiment with my crafting? Thank you in advance. Uh, no. You probably shouldn't have thanked me in advance. <laughs> uh, I'll do that type stuff on QA. Oh, I've deleted the full doors, not just the... I meant to just delete the door panels. Dang. Yeah, those guys back in. Yes, that's what I was missing. Okay, one more save and then I can go try it. And we'll see how this thing feels in its current state. having a little dream down there. Oh, looks like the sun is finally coming up a little bit. It's still dark outside, but now there's sunlight. 
Do 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 do. All right, and we'll pretend this thing's up in dry dock. Now he was having his little doggy dreams. Mojito was the runt of the litter. Uh, we did actually get Mojito from a breeder, a dog breeder, uh, but we did tons of uh, he's not an adoption, uh, but we did tons of research. Our previous Italian Greyhound we got from, uh, like, adoption, but had a questionable background. I mean, I don't care that it's 100% gray, Italian Greyhound or whatever. It was just had some health problems in terms of uh, came down with some bad cancers that were really tied to. It was a type of cancer that normally only uh, retrievers get. Uh, so with Mojito, we got him from, we did a lot of research and we found a breeder that did not have any inbreeding, like she would fly all over the country for her, her dogs. Uh, she only did one set of puppies at a time. Uh, and then she would, basically she did show dog stuff. Uh, but we actually like went and met her at her house and, you know, had a very nice house and then had their backyard, uh, had basically an acre of yards set up. But anyways, we went and talked to her, and she was super responsible and super good to the dogs. Like, we went there, and, like, there's just, like, ten Italian greyhounds all in the house uh, who come up to greet you when you get there. But anyways, uh, we went and talked to her, and we took, uh, Mojito was the runt of the litter. So we took, took him, and that's, so runts of the litter apparently have a little more doggy dreams and a little more, uh, like, Help me, help me, doggy dreams, where they're kind of having some panic. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, there it is. Do, 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 do. All right, let's give this guy a look. So this will probably stand out if it's in a city and it's on land. It'll stand out in the water too, but on land it's even it's even bigger. Do, 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 do. Oh, looks like I switched those. I need to go change those. Uh, you can actually see if you see those glass windows up there. See how the kind of the sun god ray stuff. It's a uh, affecting the ship but it's not affecting the windows that is because when I was experimenting with those trying to make them alpha uh, I switched them to a a translucency shader and so when you see that type of effect where you get the get out of the way stupid bird <laughs> hold on let me get rid of this bird uh, when you see this effect we can see like this part is kind of like lit up and has kind of like the glow on it, but this part is not. That's because that one is set to use an alpha, a transparent shader. Again, tech talk. Alright, so let's see how this guy looks for... Oh look, it's the, this is a new bug. This is a very cool bug uh, that only happens to devs and only when you do slew. Uh, I think one and only introduced this, but it basically puts every single crafting tool in your hand. See, there they all are. And my fishing pole. <laughs> All right. Well, you'll just have to ignore that and whatever this other thing that appeared in my other hand is. Yep. 
Yeah, it's a new bug that was just introduced, but again, it only affects devs and it's only on our internal build right now. Uh, so, in terms of space, let me do... Uh, you can see there's a ton of deco space on it. And this, again, this is why I looked at this thing. And I like, got it from the store before I was even thinking about using it for a player home. It's because it had a bunch of good open spaces. And my in my testing, I was able to get it to generate a nav mesh for this entire surface, which is kind of important to use it for encounters. Uh, but in terms of deco, like you can just... I mean, you can see it's got a ton. Every one of these spaces will be decoable. Ooh, heraldry the sails. Ooh. Uh, trying to think. Now, I know we can do flags. A flag would work well if we added some flags in here. I think it's got flags up here, but I think we could do some more flags. My worry with doing the sails is heraldry. I think the actual image that it sends around to everybody is 256 by 256. So if we did heraldry on it, it would be a 256 image that gets stretched across an enormous football field size space. Uh, so heraldry on the sails might not work. Whoops, looks like I deleted a few extra walls. Alright, I'll have to go figure out where those guys are. Oh, and I left this crap in here. Look, I totally missed a whole floor. Yeah, you can just tell that there's a ton of space here. Uh, I mean, it'd make for more than, you know, I'd always say, jokingly say that, like, oh, what a great dance party space this is. Uh, but, I mean, this is, like, great for, like, this would be big enough to have, like, PvP hide-and-seek contests and stuff. Because, again, this is floor number one. down here to oh it looks like I got the walls here too I'll have to come back and put the uh, those chunks back in and again you'll be able to add your own your own lights to these things Make it. Oh, come on. Let me let me down. <laughs> yeah. So this would this one's gonna have to be the uh, our, our usual like ladder teleporter thing where it use it. Or maybe I can just make this more vertical. It'd be nice if you could just drop down. No. deleted the walls on that one too but anyways yeah uh, again like I said you guys may not even notice any problems but there's some things I would change in terms of uh, like the UV texturing on some of this wood I'd probably tighten that up Yeah, I'd love to have heraldry on ship flags. I was just trying to think, run through in my head the challenges we might run into for doing that. Oh, once again, just a little bit off. A 
because uh, usually the heraldry, we take that and we bake it into the item itself and we store extra data in the item. Uh, but there's data connections that would have to be made between the house itself and the house deed and the owner. Uh, we might be able to do something like instead of it being a using the normal heraldry system, it just whoever owns the house, it puts their her heraldry on whatever flags it has there or signs their heraldry to certain places in the house. So yeah, as you can see, there's, I mean, this is like tons and tons and tons of space. And then this is the bottom down here for the storage. Yeah, majority. I mean, that's this is also. I, I think I mentioned already, but that's. I think this would be a great like PVP space, as you can imagine doing a. You know, setting up like sixteen spawn points in this thing. Uh, you know, the between the decks and all the other spot, there's there's probably sixteen spaces easily in here, especially if you fill it up with more decos and put more stuff in the way you know, install some more walls, but making it a PvP space because it's confined. You'll always be able to run them down, but they'll have enough room so they can run and they can fight, and it's not just one combat style of, like, you know, ranged will always win. It's uh, enclosed enough so it can uh, break down that whole wall of ranged guys having a big advantage. <coughs> All right, I am pretty happy with so far with just this one quick pass uh, to get it cleaned up. There's obviously quite a bit more work that needs to be done. Again, I think the biggest thing is going to be uh, adding the deco surfaces will probably take a full day of work. There's a lot of fine-tuning, like, hey, this step goes into that, but it's a separate object that actually I stretched these out when I was doing my test earlier to see if I could use it for PVE, because I need to be able to generate nav meshes that go from each floor to the other floor so that PVE, so pirates can know how to run from one to the other. Uh, but that just needs a little more tweaking and uh, positioning. But yeah, and again... UV texturing, and maybe I can deal with that now. Let me see if I can improve the texturing of these guys. Again, my concern is like the outside of the ship, these boards feel unrealistic and stretched. But as we already saw, that had its own, the hull was one object of its own. So I can probably just take the exterior material, dupe that material, generate a new UV for it, scale for it, and uh, use that material. So I'm going to try that right now. Yeah, and even uh, majority for the PvP, you can imagine, like, just even with existing systems of the Lord British and Dark Star banners, and the banners that can change colors and stuff, like putting one of those at each end of the ship. You know, on each of the top parts of the ship. Uh, and there could even be some more stuff, like building a wall in the middle of the ship so that it's you can't get over the wall, so you basically have to go under the deck, so you have to go down decks to get to the other side of the ship. I mean, there's a lot of that type of stuff that would be would be really easy. You know, a visual wall of some sort. Ship could be on fire. There's a firewall there. Spike traps. Yeah, and then have the the tower ding. Okay, so if I hide that. So the good news is that looks like it just has the one material on it. 
Now I am betting that that same plank material gets used lots of places. So let's test that and see that this same one is getting used lots of places. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Yep, so that gets used in lots of places. Uh, so I'm going to have to, but I think what I can do is go and generate. And again, the thing I'm trying to get past is one, these boards feel unrealistically large and then also blurry uh, so the thing I'm trying to get to is get it to be both smaller which will also fix the blurry issue but it, it is using the same material on inside stuff and outside stuff it just has this one scaled up larger so the way to fix that is going to be And I guess I can take a pass at this thing for uh, other as or other aspects of of uh, quality. Check and see its shader. Make sure it's on the right shader. Make sure it's on the uh, properly using spec. Step one is let me dupe this so I can do a compressed. Yeah, I'm making a pass at you, boat. Now there's a rope and a bell. Oh, I see what you're getting at there, Arca Imp Strike. Yes. Uh, yes, Arca Imp Strike. Uh, yeah, the object of one. Now I see where you're going with that joke. Hold on. You guys can't see it, but I'm sitting here waiting on a dialogue. Do, do how dare I try to duplicate a simple object just trying to duplicate a material this is really how long it takes yep still waiting maybe I have a weight cursor now yep I got a weight cursor now thanks unity thanks for screwing everything up not testing your project on a big or your engine on a big project UV tight. Do 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 do. Nope. Guess what? Waiting on a dialogue. Waiting, waiting. Okay, there we go. So let me go back in and open the ship. So I think I got the UV on there. I guess we can find out here in a second by going, oop, yeah, baby. All right, so there we go. I think I got it compressed. So again, here's the before. So again, there's a lot of these type, just like little tweaks. Uh, there's a lot of these like little tweaks that can make a big difference, you know, once they add up. This is something I may go take a pass on that just for clarity. Uh, but yeah, that already feels better for the ship. A little more realistic, both in terms of scale and then also better uh, 
quality texture because it's not stretching the, the texture as much. Like I'm going to try 3-3 three, three and see how 3-3 three, three feels. Yeah. And again, doing the tighter textures will give it a better resolution up close, but you kind of got to look at it from a little bit of a distance and see how it feels too. There's one again that to me that just feels unrealistic and blurry. Feels a little more realistic. And another thing I could do is I could scale it on one axis. Oh, that may be best, better yet. That's scaling on one axis, so it stretches it in one direction, but not the other direction. I'm not sure what I think about this this thing here. I guess this this boat is supposed to be called like whoever made it called it the Sea Queen. I guess that's supposed to be the Sea Queen. Does she have rivets for nipples? What is that supposed to be? This is a special deco. <laughs> Thankfully, they made this so you can turn it off. Oh, then you kind of have a big hole there. I think we've cut the draw calls in this thing by about 90%. Uh, we've reduced the object count on it so you guys can now have a clean space, or space to deco. Fixed my biggest concerns with the textures, which are just the boards looking poorly scaled. Uh, I think I'm going to take a quick pass at this texture and see if I can do anything to improve it. Yeah, I know there's a room that still had decos in it that I missed. I'll go clean those up. And i got to get the walls back around these doors, too. Still some more work. Again, there's I would estimate there's probably maybe a week's worth of work once you factor in the art time for doing a little more texture work, uh, texture actually modification touch up, uh, cutting out the windows so you guys can actually have windows that you can see out, uh, hooking up the doors, and then adding all the deco surfaces, I think. Uh, once you add up all those things, I think it'll be... It'll probably be a week's worth of work. Possibly even more. Hmm. Yeah, the cabin walls are here on this one, so I bet that's something that's turned off in the parent. I 
And again, there's a lot of these little just random things in here that when I see them, I'm like, ooh, that'd be fun to have as a little deco. And that'd be fun to have as a, a desk, although again, some of these don't quite hold up to the quality bar we usually set for the game. Might be time for a giveaway. Maxine just came to take the dog. <laughs> All she has to do now is open the door and she does like this hand like come come hither gesture. And Mojito immediately jumps up and runs to her. <laughs> Alright, uh, so now that should be good. So I need to now and yes, uh, Maxine will rub, rub Mojito's belly for hours and hours. In fact, that's she was just the other day getting on to me saying that Mojito likes her better because she pets him more and I don't pet him enough, which is a load of poop. I pet that dog so much. Alright, so now, okay, well, let me find these. Yeah. Oops. so odd that they did the ship railing as a bunch of unique objects. Looks like I got them all. Okay, so now we should have, yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, and we might just want to pull out these things internally. You know, hide a bunch of these guys. <coughs> and just leave it up to you guys since you can put down your own walls. Uh, I think Scotty might have actually just taken a pass. Oh, I think more decos I missed. I think Scotty just took a pass on uh, updating our walls to both improve the visuals and add some new wall types. Yeah, I may just leave that up to you guys and just like pull out all the interior walls. Since you can put your own down. And while those giant planky things seem like they fit visually, I don't think they're that attractive, these things. And you guys would probably rather have that type of completely open space. Alright, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and stop here for the morning and go make a little girl some pancakes. <laughs> Uh, 
we will I'm adjusting my mic I don't even know what that knob does actually uh, but let's do our raffle 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 uh, for those who are just joining me now sorry I've been up uh, doing this for the last three and a half hours uh, I couldn't sleep got up at three o'clock decided I'd just start streaming at 3 30 uh, you missed the part on the start of the stream. I did taming stuff and made sure the taming stuff was working and testing it. Uh, and it's getting closer. I think there's still some more stuff. I've got to do the taming artifacts next week. Uh, and I'll see how things feel after that uh, before I make too many, dif too many different changes. Uh, but it is like the my pet wyvern just as I was using it as a sample. It went from hitting from uh, 70 with a max hit, like with a critical of like 130, to it was hitting for 100 and it was like 107, and the max hit was in the 280 to 290 range. So, and it had more damage resist and uh, magic resist, and also should have more speed. It had more dexterity. Uh, for those who missed it, the movement speed on it was when I increased the movement speed, it actually moved it moved faster like if it was following me around but if I ordered it to attack it still did the stupid crawl over to it slowly thing oh there's a pet taunting thing too uh, pet loyalty how would I represent that like make it so they take less focus would be one way all right let's do this giveaway thing closing bam and this is for your choice of a cherry tree or grim reaper statue. <laughs> nice to mention Woofdom. Woofdom, congratulations. And Woofdom, hey, you're uh, the other bonus. I like, haven't even gone to see. Let me go check and see how you're. Whoa. There we go. Let's see. Yeah, I got you some more views on your taming. Looks like you're up to 190 views. I think it was in the like 60 or 70 range before I started my campaign. So again, got you a couple hundred click-throughs on, on some videos. Do do, And that was because I sent them out. There were links in the last re-engage email. I was trying some different stuff. Uh, you want the big statue? Coming right up, kind sir. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Wait a minute, that's pretty... This uh, fire dancer outfit's a little uh, risque. Let's see, giant freaking statue. Bam. Alright, Woofdom, enjoy. Did uh, Gia Tureg ever get back with his name? I never saw that come up. I think he joined and ran. Yeah, if Gia Tureg didn't ever get back with the name, I'm gonna... I'll raffle and do the... Uh, with the existing group. All right, well, we're just going to, here, I'll allow entries. We're just going to do uh, a second raffle here, and I'll send them my fire dancer outfit that I'm wearing. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I think uh, they joined, but then fell asleep on the keyboard or something. So, shh, don't tell them I gave away their fire dancer outfit. 
All right, if, and if you entered before, you, you're already entered in this one because I didn't clear the list. I'm just going to click the pick winner again. So here we go. I'm going to pick winner. Eric rules. It looks fabulous on a dude. This is a very popular outfit for guys to wear. Shroud of the Avatar is a judgment-free game. You dress in whatever you want to. You go, girl. Or guy. Here we go. Closing. And again, if you were in there before, you're still entered. So a lot of these people are raffling. You're already in there. And Parson Bar. Parson Bar, are you active? Are you around? Are you Parson Bar in game? Yeah, your Parson Bar in game. Oh, you get a. Uh, sorry about this. You get a slightly worn Fire Dancer outfit. I would sanitize that before you uh, you wear it. Oh, I don't, I don't have to like whisper anymore. Maxine's up. Uh, so, guys, uh, thank you very much for joining the morning stream. Again, got all the taming stuff tested. It's kind of a close. It's kind of close to where I expect it to be. This will be a two coffee cup morning, by the way. Uh, it's getting kind of close to where I would expect it to be. It is. Uh, uh, like I said, getting up there, it looked like I could more than double the DPS of the creature overall. And, uh, uh, anyways, I'm going to do the taming artifact next week, and I'll see how it feels with those taming artifacts. Because, again, I want them to be, if you have some taming items uh, and you have high taming skills, I want it to be taming pets to be kind of where you guys probably want them to be now. And, again, uh, worked on the ship getting closer I think it'll probably I, I, again I didn't see anything I already found some easy fixes for a couple of my biggest visual complaints uh, I'll take a few more passes on it and uh, we will get it there uh, before we push it out but I mean that could be I mean, that could come out in a patch for this next release and be available to people and again my plan for that was that the uh, it would go to the Lord of the Isles uh, as a choice they could choose uh, either the uh, big house that uh, Travis is making or that ship uh, and I'll try to get a we'll try and do a one version that's the water version uh, that the bottom deck or layer of the ship may not be usable we may have to seal that off the very bottom like that kind of whole area if we do the water version uh, we can do water cutouts but it has a resolution to it and we can't get the granularity we really want in the water cutouts uh, but anyway so then the other one would be uh, we'd have the land dock version so uh, anyways uh, uh, yes no no amount of bilge punch pump would uh, keep up with that uh, anyways guys thank you so much thanks for all the support thanks for joining me this morning for a little morning stream uh, let's see what how far is it so next Thursday is locked down internally which means a week so we have like 13 days until the release uh, so next week we'll probably get out of QA hopefully Monday or Tuesday ish we don't have any massive scary changes like a new unity version or anything like that so hopefully it'll be pretty solid in terms of uh, uh, bugs and stuff and uh, again as I mentioned we're kind of pushing away from the whole set a long-term schedule and do the long-term schedule stuff because we keep so often we hit things that are things we think should be done and need to be done uh, in the past like we just haven't done them then because you know we told people we were going to do this that and the other thing uh, we're trying to get away from that again as we continue to be even more and more agile we're not it's not chaotic it is really we're working on the best thing uh, so trying to get all that stuff uh, when we see good improvements and again like the ship is kind of a perfect example of that that just stumbled into it 
<laughs> oh, hi, Griffler. Yeah, you messaged me in game. Uh, but uh, you, you're just about to miss me, too, because I'm just about to log off. I've been on since 3.30. I've been on three and a half hours. But anyway, so there'll probably be a lot more stuff that we have strike throughs again, which makes Star cry a little bit. But uh, everybody understands it is for the best for the game that we work on the, you know, if something feels like it, not on the schedule, but it needs to be done. We need, we should just be doing it. Uh, I think some of that schedule, like trying to force ourselves to adhere to that strict schedule, is also why we've had some buggier releases. Uh, of course, the last couple were buggier, but for odd reasons for reasons related to Unity upgrades and such. But trying to stick to those things, we end up like just focusing on the tasks and we don't spend as much time on optimization or bugs. Uh, and then we also have the same problem that we end up hurrying whatever we're working on and we do kind of half-assed versions. So again, lots of reasons why we're trying to move away from sticking to this fixed, like here's what we're doing this three months and here's what we're doing the next three months, here's what we're doing the next three months. Uh, but. Uh, it's all for the best. Uh, it is not because we are uh, not planning, not uh, and chaotic or something like that. It's actually for good reasons. So, anyways, you guys have a fabulous weekend. I have no idea if I will be streaming again this weekend, but I'm glad I got to stream some this morning since I missed out yesterday for Maxine's pre-K graduation. Uh, yes. As someone who never went to a graduation ever, 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 ever. Uh, kind of seems silly to me to have pre-K graduations. But Maxine had blast and uh, it was very good. She got to sing in front of an audience. Yeah, she got to sing in front of the, the audience and she was pretty much the only kid you could hear following after her dad. Of uh, singing loud and proud while the other kids were kind of like... Rrr. We have a video. Facebook friends will probably see the video of her singing. Uh, also dancing, except uh, she had one problem. She danced so emphatically and jumping around so much that her, her graduation cap flew off and then she freaked out because she couldn't get back on and had to go to a teacher to get the teacher to put it back on. Uh, but anyways, very proud of Maxine. Even if it is a little bit of a silly thing from an old guy's point of view where like no, you graduate high school and you graduate college. That's it. <laughs> no trophies for everybody. Uh, but anyways, guys, again, thank you so much. Uh, I will see you, if not later this weekend, I will see you Monday. Uh, nope. Thank you very much, Eric Rules, for throwing me some bits at the last minute. And... Uh, Yes, that fire outfit would look fabulous on you. But uh, again, thank you. I will see you Monday, if not before then. I may do some streaming later this weekend, although I think we have like stuff planned this morning. And then we've got a birthday party in the afternoon, and my parents are coming tomorrow, so I'm trying to think when I can get a stream in. I may not sneak a stream in, but if not, again, I'll be doing a stream on Monday. Uh, Tuesday, I will be doing a stream... Uh, I'm trying to think what my schedule is for next week. Uh, I think uh, next Thursday, I think I'm going to have lunch with the Crowfall guys. If you guys know anything about the Crowfall project, I'm going to have lunch with those guys. I like to uh, we go and hang out with them occasionally. Star and I will go have lunch with with the head guys over there and chat stuff. So, uh, But again, uh, thanks everybody. Thanks for all the support. And I will go find someone to stream real quick. And we will be off. Do do do. Twitch TV Shroud of the Avatar. Sure, is anybody else streaming at this time? Oh, plenty of people. Oh, there's a 24 hour stream going on by, uh, by Famines. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I think we're gonna give Famines, uh, uh, follow there or a uh, raid there. Uh, I would do uh, synthetic nine, but I think I'm gonna be streaming him a Dad? bunch in next. Yes. Can you make us breakfast? Uh, by the way, I think I mentioned that I am also in addition to the cleaner. I'm also the cook, uh, so it's time for me to go make some breakfast for the family. Uh, but anyways, let's do uh, famines. I haven't raided famines in a while.
Oh, it's just a light on the power supply pumpkin. Raid famines. All right. Uh, guys, uh, again, thank you so much. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for uh, following. Thanks for uh, feedback and chat is invaluable. And I wouldn't say hi. I wouldn't say hi. Okay, well, you just did. <laughs> all right, Maxine, right up there's the camera. Say hi to the camera. Hi. There you go. Here's our little graduate. Okay, guys, let's go raid. And uh, again, I'll see you Monday, if not before then. See ya. All right, we've got to click that button.